so um, over to you, Paul, in terms of the relationship with the private sector and how they fit into the picture. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as, as Mike mentioned, I work with the International Telecommunications Union, which is the UN's uh, lead agency for information and communication technology. One uh, interesting uh, aspect of the ITU is that it's the only UN agency that also has private sector members. We've got more than 700 private sector members from the world of ICTs. So all the major telecommunications and ICT companies are our members. Um, we work together very, very closely with, with the member states as well as civil society members. A lot of the work that we do there is linked to digital inclusion, which is very much part of the core mandate of the ITU, um, but also some lesser known work, more in the technical field, and it's, th it's that sort of uh, work that I'd like to focus on a little bit now. Um, one of the areas we work on a lot is called standardization. And this essentially is ensuring that we have global standards that enable, enables technology to work together. Um, with all of the opportunities that are outlined in this report and in many previous reports, indeed, it, it, it's an, an area that has been discussed for many years now. Um, without this, this uh, formula for an, an in, in, and framework rather of standardization, um, we'll never be able to achieve real scale up and really leverage uh, the, all of the opportunities and potential benefits that we can get from it. On the issue of, of uh, public-private partnerships, um, this is often cited as, a, as a particularly important in this sphere um, in, in the humanitarian and development uh, fields. I think all of the big successes that have come uh, in terms of, of uh, communication with communities affected by disasters um, or community communications, let's call it, all of the big successes have been public-private partnerships. The one we had in, in Haiti, for instance, was, as, as Imogen alluded to, it was very much with the private sector, not just as a partner, but even as a lead partner. They are the ones with the networks, they are the ones with the innovations, they are the ones with the technologies, and quite often they're the ones as well with the, net, the community networks at their fingertips. So it makes absolutely uh, a very, very important sense to, to work very, very closely with them. There is, however, uh, um, an issue in terms of the investment in infrastructure, and this again is quite often looked at in a, in a public-private pri partnership framework. Um, the fact of the matter is that investment in infrastructure, telecommunications and ICT infrastructures has been going down since 2008, while the data and the demand for data is going up, and we're heading towards some sort of a bottleneck in terms of really not being able to realize all of the potential that technology can deliver if we don't address through private public partnerships the very serious deficits uh, in infrastructure today. There are tools there available. For instance, every, every, every country has signed up for universal coverage in terms of telecommunications and they have at their fingertips something called the Universal Service Fund. But this remains underutilized in most countries, particularly in developing and least developing countries. Uh, that, that fund was originally uh, envisioned to, to be used for infrastructure, infrastructure, but it can also be used to boost and drive other sectors because that's basically what we're seeing today. We're seeing technology not as a standalone sector, but as a driver and a catalyst of all sectors. Um, in, in, in the ITU, we, we have been part of something called the Broadband Commission, which is, uh, uh, which is a very much a public-private partnership. It consists of about 60 high-level CEOs and government officials, as well as some technology foundations and some well-known advocates uh, for civil society. And the, the, the purpose is, is to advocate for mobile broadband around the world. We have seen in the, in the last number of years two billion mobile broadband subscriptions, which many of us believe will enable us to really reach the, 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 the goal of full digital, digital inclusion. Mobile broadband is the fastest growing technology in history, and it is particularly growing uh, in developing and least developed countries. We're also seeing at the same time a, a, almost a, a fire sale in prices. Prices for broadband have gone down more than 80% in the last five to six years. So we really are seeing uh, the whole issue of not just access, but affordable access being addressed. So I think what this report provides us with is not uh, I new ideas, but it provides us with a, a, a platform that we can already anticipate and know is coming. So aid agencies, together with private sector, need to anticipate that this is happening. It's not a dreamscape that we're, 
we're painting here. It really is happening. And I believe in order to totally realize it, we need a shift in thinking in, in the development and humanitarian sectors. We need to see private sector as real partners, not just uh, providers of aid dollars or good technologies, but real partners that can work with us uh, to, to ensure digital inclusion, to ensure that people are fully empowered by technology and that they have the access to deliver their own solutions, to create their own solutions, to design their own solutions, to connect with each other and to create their own content and tell their own stories. This is, uh, would very much put the public-private partnership model as a facilitator, uh, enab enabling this and, and working with communities for this to happen. Um, the, the, the sector, uh, as many people have, have remarked uh, in, in the report and elsewhere, uh, is being disrupted before our very eyes. S solutions to aid, pr aid issues and aid challenges are being developed in Kigali, in Nairobi, in Kuala Lumpur, etc., not in Geneva and New York and London. Um, and we need to be able to, to have a network in place very much with private sector, uh, because it, it will not happen without them uh, or with us on our own, uh, in order to, f to ensure that these communities have the platforms and have the networks to enable them to define their own solutions, because at the end of the day, they are the true owners of the outcomes of aid. Thank you. Fantastic. Really interesting, Paul. Um, really <coughs> critical stuff there about standardization, interoperability of systems, but about enabling the private sector to play its, and play its part to enable people to take take um, to manage their own situation.